welcome to Kitchen Connect. Bryony's back. Yay. Yay. So really I was happy. just looking at the videos going, I saw that one. Yeah, Is that the, the one, one where the whole, all the topping fell off and that? Mm. <laughs> that was the cameraman that put that out there. It's not fair, is okay. it? So welcome back, Bry. Thanks. Welcome back. So we've got Bryony today. and Might at the be a end bit rusty. You'll be all right. And at the end of the video, we've also got a new segment. We've got Ruth Hall from The Good Grocer in South Perth. She's going to match some really, really interesting wine with this dish that we're going to do today. So big hello to everyone online on Facebook and a special hello to our lovely Kip Cooks Collective members. Really? Hello, all of you girls and boys out there. And uh, to, I think, Castle Hill and to Farmers, Hillside Farmers Direct as well. We've, we're just going out to so many people. It's really wonderful. So thank you for tuning in to our Kitchen Connect Live. We're, today we're going to be showing you how to cook uh, something I made up, a hipster's chicken tray bake, smoky chicken tray bake with some lovely winter vegetables because we've got some great winter vegetables coming up in uh, our southern forest produce box as well at the moment. So these, this is a lovely recipe to use some of those up. So Bry, starting with some chicken thighs and I'm yes. going to cook Yes, so I've got minute. skin on chicken thighs. Chicken thigh, uh, much prefer to chicken breast. Chicken breast can be quite dry, especially if it's overcooked. Um, but the thigh has the fat content. It's going to keep it nice and moist. The skin, get that beautiful golden crispy skin, which I love. Also keeps the, the chicken nice and moist, especially if you're baking over a period of time. So we're just cutting them in half. And most of the time you'll notice with a thigh that you're going to have like a fatter bit and a thinner bit. So when it says cut it in <laughs> half, a fatter thigh and That's a thinner not thigh. Like my thighs are both fat. <laughs> I was going <laughs> to say, as a bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so I want to try and keep them sort of even size. So um, rather than just cutting it down the middle, I'll cut it towards. So there's one piece that's an even thickness and another piece of an even thickness. Beautiful. Thanks. <laughs> Beautiful thighs. She's been cooking lots. Since I have. Away, it's no not that way. I'm rusty on cooking. It's a, I'm rusty about talking while cooking. Yeah, I'm here. I do talk Check whilst I cook. I know. And people mm, be right. You'll be right. Okay. Um, and we're going to season the chicken thighs yes. with uh, two oh, different types of, of paprika. I've got some smoked uh, paprika yeah. and I've got some mild paprika. So you can use Spanish mild paprika or I Hungarian. Want. Doesn't really matter. Sometimes Hungarians. I, I find that the, the Spanish paprika, especially the Herbie's one, oh, there you go. You just want to leave uh, a teaspoon. Yeah, there. Seems to, oh, just I just love this one. Let's put, this is my favourite one, let's put it that way. And uh, good sweet paprika, I do really like the Herbie's brand, have tried a number of other brands, and sometimes they can be just a little bit overpowering. I don't know, Ian Hempel's really good with his spices, so w whichever spice you actually get from him, it just all works really well. They're just so fresh and so beautiful. So... If you've got smoked paprika in your pantry from 1991, may not smell of anything, it won't taste of anything. So make sure that you've got fresh spices, which is a bit of a, is it oxymoron? Freshly Wait, dried, yeah, fresh, fresh dry, dry spices. Spice. Not old. So the spice is dry, so it's obviously not fresh. That's what I always get confused when you say like um, chickpeas, dried chickpeas, who are fresh dried, not canned, anyway, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not go there. Irrelevant. Actually, you could put chickpeas in there. Can this. you? Yeah, Can you? Be nice. Absolutely. Can you oil? Absolutely. Thanks. We are cooking this in uh, our beautiful solid technics pan because it's just going to work really well. Just retain the heat. And the thing that I love, so I've been cooking for the last three months at home in my solid technics pan this size mm. and the smaller one doing everything in it. So, um, everything. We've, well, most things. Well, you said that you cooked a couple of um, chickens in there, like whole chickens, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, they were little chickens or a big, a regular chicken and you can a butterfly. You could spatch, I was going to say, you could spatch cock it out, Because when I do the chicken, I like to take the backbone out to I'm make... I'm just going to um, go whoosh like that. If I haven't got s chicken bones in the freezer to make gravy, I'll take the backbone oh, out yeah. and do and a, then there you a go. Quick, quick chicken stock on the side. So, salt, pepper, the two paprikas I've done, like... Two thirds of the paprika, skin side down, so we can get that sizzle and get that lovely crispy skin chicken. So I've had the pan heating for a little bit as well. Look at that colour; it's gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, you don't want to do your chicken chilled straight from the fridge. These are probably a little bit too 
chilled still. You can see, you can see them going like this straight oh, away. I can't keep you? Like forgetting that we've, ooh, we've got a like trolley that. over here. Oh yeah, my trolley <laughs> habit. My trolley system. She's got a new working system. Quite well, my trolley system. Yeah. Um, but you can actually see the chicken like really sort of um, react, shrinking. Yeah, <laughs> shrinking up. Going. Oh no, it's so hot in here like that. So it's actually quite good to show people that. Um, Mm -hmm. that actually happening but I've got the pan it's been heating up and I've got the pan on sort of like a, a medium medium low heat because if we had this super hot what would happen is that the spice would just burn on the un underside of the chicken on the um, on the skin and it would burn and the skin wouldn't be crispy it would just be black and burnt so if you cook it slightly lower for a longer uh, period of time you're going to get this lush uh, flavour as well as beautiful golden colour, not mm. black colour. Um, so that's really good. So you're going to discuss um, yes. also what else there is in the... So I'm just going to um, prepare the vegetables, veggies. Um, which we're going to toss with the rest of the paprika mix. Um, so just cutting these tomatoes in half, I'll come back to those in a moment. I've got some red onion I'm going to slice thinly. So I cut it through the, what is it, root top to tail? Top to bottom. I top yeah. to bottom. Root to tail. No, well, root well, to tail. Is root yeah. and tail top the same thing? Yeah. And then I just do a little angle cut on either side to take that root out. And this is... Leonese. Leonese. So if you've, if if you've been to cut. our knife classes... Um, See, I get to about that point, it's going to fall over, so I push it that way. So I've got more surface area on the board. It's much safer for me to chop and continue getting it nice and thin. But I like how you haven't got it so thin that 25, because it's going to all bake in the oven for yes. about 25 minutes. So if you cut things too thin, they're just going to burn in the oven. Um, so I like the way you haven't cut it. Well, I do you cut it thin, but not super, We'll know super, that your recipe thin. does say thin. Do you want to put the other half I in there? will, thinly sliced. Oh, okay. Just going to do something else. Yeah, oh, I see. You're going on I can to the cauliflower. Yeah, I can talk about all my stuff and then she continue on. She knows what on. she's doing. You are I've so done bossy. This I've done this before. Just because you've been doing this on your own, you got had nobody to boss around except for the cameraman. Ah. Um, so, and then the cauliflower, just sort of sliced like so. There's sort of bigger bits, cut them down, but that's all right. What else have I got? And then the kale, which Tracy will talk about in a sec while I finish off these bits. Um, and then we're going to finish off with some beautiful feta, which I'm going to cut into squares, and some chives at the end for a bit of freshness, a yeah. bit of greenery. Yeah. Although you're going to get lovely greenery yeah, from the, the kale. The green does, you know, the kale you're does. you're going to massage shortly, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, I am. And I'm is just checking my thighs. Okay. Now, uh, the name. Hipsters. What name? Oh, hip. <laughs> is it because it's got kale in it? What makes it a hipster's dish? Because um, I just thought it would be good. Um, because... Yeah, I guess because um, hipsters. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm making a generalisation here yeah, now, yeah. aren't I? Hip but I just hipsters. I. Th it's what like it's some guy with a beard. I know, but they're great because beer. they care about the land and they like growing veggies and they like everything. Are they? Yeah, definitely. Anyone? Any hipsters out there watching? So you're um, you're a hipster then? Yeah, I'm a bit of a hipster. Uh, I sh I haven't got a beard though. Um, and I'm not good in those shorts either. Um, but I just feel that it's all beautiful and fresh. We're cooking with some nice spices, but not like too mm. over the top. Okay. And everything's just lovely and fresh. And blokes have this uncanny knack of making things uh, sort of easy in the kitchen. So that there's less washing up, I suppose. I don't know what it is. But this is just how I think. It's all in my head, right? Yeah, I'm just I'm totally making this up. But so everything gets cooked in this tray bake together. Mm -hmm. And because we've used our big solid technics pan, we can take it from the stove and pop it straight into the oven. Yeah. And I just think hipsters would do that, wouldn't they? I mean, I think that's quite complimentary to hipsters, if there's any watching. So our favorite kale, if my friend Chris is watching, she probably won't be because <laughs> she's seen it's got kale in it. But I'm going to I'm going to add some kale. We're going to show use any vegetable yeah. in this. Let, let's just answer this question and then answer we'll the it. question. Yeah. Uh, Dale, Dale has asked, "Do we sell the pans?" Do we sell the pans, Dale? We 
can sell the pans. Do you want to private message me and I can give you some information? Just Is because the next six then? months is going to be a bit topsy turvy, so just private message me and I'll um, we'll or we'll probably have a phone call, Dale. Yes. And uh, Natalie, Natalie and Millie say uh, welcome back, Brian. Oh. Thanks, Natalie. Brilliant. All right. Um, we've got the kale. Bryony has uh, pre-prepared the kale. What you want to be doing is just t tearing off this kale. And I will fess up. This is actually kale from um, a shop. It's not kale from our fruit and veggie boxes. And I can so tell the difference. Um, the kale that we get in the fruit and veggie boxes seems to be a lot more tender than this one. Um, and uh, I wish, yeah... I wish we had that, really. The truth Was it be known. not in your box this but week? It's not in the box this week. We do have cauliflower, though, this week. Um, so there obviously are not all kales are created equal, but you can actually buy baby kale as well, like the bags of baby kale, which you could definitely yeah. use in here. I reckon this is just about ready to turn. And that might there um, we go. solve there we go. some of those issues, like Chris's uh, hatred for kale. <gasps> if she... Um, yeah tried the baby kale instead very possibly very possibly I'll move that over there so i'm just going to turn this chicken over now we've got some lovely golden color i'm going to turn that off because i do not want to overcook the chicken but with kale olive oil and this is about 120 grams of kale and olive oil and really get your hands in there and squish it it's really good and if you're small like me then you might want to put your bowl of kale in the sink. I learned this years ago. In the sink, so that you're actually bending over, trying, you know, doing that rather than trying to like. I'm. I want to be on tiptoe. It's never an like issue this. for me. Because I can I know this is really uncomfortable for me. So at home, I'd be doing this with the bowl in the sink. Excuse um, me. And. Oh. Oh, sorry. Ooh, With the right. bowl in the sink so that we'll just... What I'm doing is I'm really, like, crushing up the fibres in the kale. So I'm massaging it to... Um, just so the kale relaxes a little bit. Essential oils. Is it uptight kale? We've got, yeah. We've got some huh. nice music playing. You can't hear it. It's only, like, it's at that sort of... Um, t what's the word? When dogs can hear things. Frequency. Resident. Frequency. Resident, re frequency that only kale can hear it, but it's that lovely, soothing, um, yeah, music. Oh, have a look at this, what I've prepared here. Is that on the it's top camera? To dry. Yeah, look. So I've put the rest of the paprika on. Um, so that's the two paprikas, mild and smoked. Some salt, some pepper, and some olive oil. Just mix that up. That looks beautiful on its own, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it? I love it. Yeah. I love it. You could just roast that like that on a tray, couldn't you? Absolutely. So here's my squash kale, and that'll be a lot more tender. So that's going to go in as well. Okay, so that's all ready and to go. I'm, I'm going to wash my hands I now. I want to wash my hands They're too. beautifully smooth. Your hands? Yeah, kale and olive oil hands. Oh, okay. Yes, we have a question. Uh, would would you still need to massage baby kale? Would you no. still need to massage baby kale? No. 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 It's much more tenderer. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? Much more tenderer. Most baby things are, aren't they? So, yeah, they, yeah, you wouldn't have to massage baby kale. It would probably go down to, like, like nothing. Well, I was nothing. just thinking about, like, you know, I normally have baby spinach. Do you want me to put this in um, here? No, you're putting it um, in. But it would... No, down baby to nothing, wouldn't no. it, in yeah. this dish? Don't no use substance. baby spinach. So, so let's, what else? Let's have... Oh, good question, oh, Bryony. And this? So you this now? Yeah, you can check that in. Uh, what you could <coughs> use, silver beet would work. And oh definitely yeah. add the stalks in here as well, because the stalks are, are lovely. Uh, what's that? Starts with CH, that's got... It's like spinach, chard... The colour, you know, the, char, the rainbow silver char. beet yeah. rainbow chard. Yep, yeah, yeah, different colours. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Mediterranean vegetables go really well in here. Hipsters love the Mediterranean, do they? don't they? Yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> you see definitely. them in the Mediterranean yeah. often. Yes. <laughs> 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 if you're at, if you're out and about in the Mediterranean with, uh, um, what are they called? I've got my. What are those? Binoculars. Binoculars. As soon as I act something. I can remember the word for it. It's quite peculiar. Um, 
Yeah, if you're out and about in the Mediterranean with binoculars and you see, you'll find some hipsters if you look closely enough. So Mediterranean vegetables. Um, uh, uh, capsicum would go well in here. A little diced capsicum. You mm. could definitely put in... Uh, I mean, you could put in some uh, yellow whole capsicum garlic like in there. The yeah, in yellow that capsicum one. would be good. Even green capsicum in here would be good, actually. You know, well. I, I have an issue with green capsicum. I know. I do a little bit, but it has its place okay. in my life. In um, While you're away, we did... I'd, we, the cameraman and I, did... Um, oh, chili con carne. And I love that with green capsicum. Oh, really? The grassiness of green capsicum okay. in there. Yeah, it's I really like good. red. Oh, I Red all the way. And yellow, yeah. Well, they're occasion. much. It's much sweeter, isn't it? Yeah, much I just sweeter. yeah. The grassiness is not. And I just like arranging it a little bit so that you can see you've got cauliflower there. You've got. I just want to get a bit of cauliflower. Okay, there, there you the go. Top. There's the um, diced feta. It actually looks quite pretty even before it's cooked. Really, doesn't it? It does. I think so it looks beautiful. Yeah, it's a bit, bit it more red really at nice. the top. Does it need more red at the top? Yeah, but it's getting baked, so I don't think it really matters. Yeah, noticed. well, it does. It does come out. You just make sure <coughs> that you can see a few little bits and pieces. I actually made this recipe up ages ago, and it did have za'atar in it, which mm. is um, a mixture of thyme, dried thyme, sumac, which is a citrusy um, spice, and uh, made from ground berries actually, and sesame seeds. And that's uh, more of a, well, I suppose Turkish sort of. Yeah, but really. North African, no, Moroccan style The thing. vegetables and the chicken. But I like it with the smoked paprika, actually, a lot. You can do any sort of spice mix. And this is what I thought. This is what I thought. Let's re, um, sort of invent this, re this. at home, I'd be going, it. rummaging through the spice packets and going, oh, I've got this, like you said, I've got sumac, but, you know, I've got this, I've got that. And it's just, I'd just put whatever you like in there. Well, could be an Italian tray bake. Well, it could. It? it could. It would be a nice idea to theme it slightly, but as you say, like a little um, Italian one, you could definitely put olives with the tomatoes and eggplant, zucchini, capsicum, and we have a question. Yeah. What ve uh, Millie's asking, what vegetables apart from capsicums are Mediterranean? Oh, well, that's uh, what zucchinis. Was just yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh. Zucchini, zucchini. That's right. Zucchini and. Eggplant. Eggplant. Those are sort of oh, onion, garlic. But when Tracy and I were talking about, you know, oh, you could put any vegetables in her, and she knows I love mushrooms, so mushrooms would be in everything. Would and you? F I would fry off the mushrooms <coughs> just slightly. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, fry Gosh. them off first, get a little bit of colour on them. Yes. But even like whole or halved button. mushrooms, or oh, the button mushrooms, okay, yeah. just perhaps halved, so that you've got some, yeah. so I'd the mushrooms aren't thinly sliced. Absolutely. I'd toss them in that chicken oil. Chicken fat yeah. oil with yeah, paprika. Yeah, yeah. really Get some nice. Color on them. Really, really nice. I've been doing lots of mushrooms. All right, we've done. Okay. Look at us. It's because she's back. See, twenty minutes done. Done. No, this isn't cooked yet, so we have to wait for another twenty-five minutes. We're going to put this in the oven. <laughs> twenty-five minutes, <laughs> and just chat. Do we? Oh, us chat. Oh, I thought you were <laughs> well, just going to let just them just have a chat. chat. Have a cup of tea. Oh, they're having um, a chat. Don't worry. They're yeah. having a chat. <laughs> they're right. always having a chat. I love it. So um, we're talking about. Um, so any other it? any other vegetables? I mean, you could even put things like, gosh, this would be crazy. Gosh, Hipsters would love it though. Brussels sprouts, roasted Brussels sprouts, uh. amazing. You could add bacon in there. Well, as soon as you said Brussels sprouts, I thought bacon, bacon. or pancetta or yeah. something. You could add. I mean, a tray bake is whatever. Well, for yeah, for me, it's what I've got in the fridge goes in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really great way of using up your your um, your vegetables. The onions definitely have give it a really nice. That's what we're missing on the top. Give it a really nice um, a t a sort Sweetness. of savory. Or I was going to say a savoriness, like a even w because they're roasted with all those lovely juices mm. on as well, and the salt and the pepper and the smoked paprika. Um, I would keep onion in it if you can, unless you're on FODMAP. Um, and I then onion starts onion basically in. every dish for me. Yeah, I think it's a it's a very good st it's a very good starter. I love whenever I roast vegetables. If I don't put red onion in it, I find that I feel that there's something missing. It's a little bit lacklustre. Mm. Good word, hey? Good word. We're allowed to take. And it um, the feta. Yes, tell them about the feta. Um, our preferred feta is Mandela. Uh, if you can find that in the shops, it's more like IGA's type of thing. It's a beautiful feta. 
Made uh, here in WA. That's right. Yeah, that's why we like it as well. But it is creamy. It just does seem to be creamier than um, than regular feta, I suppose. Mm -hmm. So let's pop this in the oven. Surprise! We've got a surprise. I've got gloves. You've got the gloves. I've got. Oh, oh. do you want to? How's on that, Bry? That looks amazing. There we go. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, I'll take this one. I'm always a bit scared putting it on here, but... Oh, no, that's still a bit warm, so... Oh, while no. you've got your gloves, can you pick that one up, please? Yeah, I've She's just positioning the thing. Thanks. Yeah. So, before... Well. After. Do you want to do that from the top? Before... After. 25 minutes later? Yeah. Oh, I was going to do my little... <laughs> I was going to do my um. super Wonder Woman. Like yeah. This. 25 minutes later... Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. I forgot about that. Yes. Didn't All I? right. I so we're going to let that definitely cool. let it cool before you dish it up. But you'll have some beautiful juices in the bottom there. Yeah. Oh, look, this oh, feta sort of yeah. Feel the yeah, the chicken's all the cooked. The chicken thigh is firm, but with the bounce still. Oh, look at those juices yeah, nice coming juices. out. That I is know. nice. <laughs> with the feta and everything. Let's just finish it off with our oh chives. Oh yes, chives. Because that, that'll make chopped. a huge difference. Well, it does just give a little bit of a. You can put parsley on if you don't have chives. But I like. I always remember. Um, oh yeah, I, if I can remember <coughs> his name. One of the guys that we, anyway, he's on, on the telly, but he came and oh. did a cooking class with us at Matters of Taste years ago. And he said that he... Toby Puttock. Toby Puttock. And he said that he did a tomato sauce where he had, like, big tomatoes in and tin tomatoes, like we do our tomato sauce. And then at the end, he'll put in cherry tomatoes just to finish oh off. Right. And as he said, it's like there's three tomatoes, Layers. but they're all different, mm. slightly different flavours, slightly different textures. Mm. And it really made the sauce interesting. Mm -hmm. So there we are. So onion and chives. <laughs> Did you see last week's video? No, good. Let's not talk about it. No, because um, Wednesday's no, school pick up early day, so I haven't been able to watch two o'clock on Wednesdays. Oh, yeah. Sorry but about that. But now I'm here. I'm here. Um, okay. And the other thing is, if you're not keen, let's we'll just yeah change the subject Why? back here. Is just do it with paprika. You don't. Mm. Uh, yeah, you don't need to do it with the smoked. Uh, paprika if you're not into smoky things. Yeah, and uh, I find paprika is a little um, polarising, as in, like, my stepsister doesn't like smoked paprika. When I was doing paellas, practising them mm. for the class mm. back then, um, the, she, she didn't like the smoked paprika. Mm. But I love the smoked paprika. I know, so, you know, it's just one of those things and um, that people you either love or you hate. Okay. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. And you can love it or hate it. It's totally up to you. Just make sure you've got enough salt and pepper on there because the salt is very important. Even though the feta is salty, there's mm. nothing else that's salty in there, so it does need a bit of salt. Yeah, so we see salt in the vegetables, salt on the chicken. Yeah, perfect. So we're now going to cross over to the wine box in South Perth. And Ruth Hall is going to uh, tell you what wine she suggests to go with this beautiful dish. Um, and it is from the Ferguson Valley to go with Ooh, our West... Like yeah, yeah. To go with our d Western Australian uh, veggies in the dish as well. So over to Ruth, you'll love her. Q05 is indicative of the quality and the integrity that they have for all of their products. Hi, I'm Ruth from the Wine Box in South Perth and most of you, or some of you, may actually know me from the Liquor Barons in Applecross as well. Um, welcome to the Wine Box. Tracy has asked me today to recommend a wine for one of her fabulous recipes. Um, I believe the recipe of the day was the chicken tray bake, um, which is full of paprika and lovely smoky essences. So I have actually chosen the Aylesbury Estate Gamay. Um, it's a beautiful, lovely wine from the Ferguson Valley. Um, family owned, family run, fifth generation farmers. Um, we sell it here for $28.99 and at that it is a beautiful, rich, yet soft style that I think would be perfect with the tray bake. Um, it's really quite interesting, the company actually uses the original branding of their cattle which uh, of course they've been on their property for five generations now, nearly 140 years. So the Q05 is indicative of the quality and the integrity that they have for all of their products. So I chose the Gamay to match the chicken tray bake because of a because I like breaking the rules so we had to have a red wine with chicken because I love 
flouting the rules completely. I do believe that this works beautifully because it is soft and yet it's got um, a lovely intensity to it. It's rounded, it's smooth, it's got uh, rich cherry and raspberry and yet it's really almost a little smoky. So I believe it will go beautifully with the smoked paprika. Uh, and in fact, I tried it myself with some Hasselback paprika potatoes at home and just the smell coming out of the oven as I was sipping, or rather glugging my glass of wine, was absolutely perfect. And I'm very, very confident that you will enjoy it as much as I do. So there you go. She's Yum. a wine slurper too. It's great, isn't it? You don't sip your wine, you slurp it. Go down and get a bottle of that uh, um, wine. Yeah, the, the, yeah, the um, cameraman's already got one at home because this is our dinner tonight. So he'll he'll be. Uh, I'll see if I can take it. Sneak a little picture of him drinking his uh, gamay there. Uh, but I th it sounds really gorgeous, doesn't it, to go with this chicken? I think it's a great idea. So we're going to have Ruth each week um, uh, giving us a wine match to go with uh, our food. Yes, so well, Bryce I need to grab a bottle, notch some of this. bottle of that on the way home as well because I've got this for dinner too. So. Ta-ta! It's really good. So thank you for joining us this week. We hope you have enjoyed it. Next week we are back. Nice. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Had the feta and beautiful yeah. creaminess to yeah. it. Lovely. Mm -hmm. uh, next week we're going to be I'm doing my vegetable lasagna and talk about using veggies up from the fridge. This recipe came about because Emma, our eldest daughter, was coming around for dinner, Monday night family dinner. Um, I thought, why don't we do a vegetarian lasagna of all the lovely vegetables that I've got in the fridge? So I'm going to show you. It's going to include my favourite vegetable, which beetroot. is beetroot. Yay! And Bryony, you could put mushrooms in it as well. So um, next week, join us at 2 o'clock from Matters of Taste website or Castle Hill Shopping Centre. No, not Shopping Centre. Castle Hill Facebook um, or wherever you are on Facebook today. You can join us back here uh, next Wednesday. Wednesday at 2 o'clock. So but it's great to have Bri back because she knows what she's doing. <laughs> so thanks for watching. We'll see you next and week. We'll see you next week. Bye.